Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Azure Data Factory to copy some data from Dynamics CRM online into an Azure Data Lake. So, um, what I've tended to find, I've been looking at this scenario and I found that there's a few articles out there, but they're not really talking about how to do it from CRM. So, you've, you've got to kind of work out a couple of things. So, what we're going to do, um, first off, we have a look in our Azure portal, and here I've got um, a data lake instance set up in North Europe and if I have a quick look at the data explorer you can see here um, I've got a couple of folders and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my data factory create a new folder and put some data from CRM in a new temp folder down here um, the so in CRM itself you can see here's my CRM instance there's nothing too flashy about it and one thing we're going to do is use the um, use the RESTful endpoints for um, for CRM. So as I'm already logged in, you can see here I can go to the API um, and that'll, that'll display all the different um, entities within CRM that are available for me to use. So it's quite useful to be able to sort of investigate the metadata of these. But the key thing is this is the, this is the URL that I need for when I go into Data Factory. So I'm just going to copy that for a moment. And then inside my Data Factory, I'm going to go and create um, a copy data pipeline. So here we're going to copy, um, use, just do a sample, and I'm going to run this once now. In fact, let's, let's do it daily. So we'll run it once every day. And um, in the source data, I'm going to look for the old data connector. So I'm just going to leave pretty much the, the default. If I wanted to use a, a gateway, I suppose I could change it to on-prem, but the bit I'm going to do is um, use my URL for my CRM instance here, and I'm going to change it to auth authentication, and then I'm going to authorize against that. So I'm going to connect as my user. You can see I've got a token there. And next, when I when I click next, it's now going to go and inspect that data that we had a look at in the browser before, so I can work out what entities I've got available to be able to connect to. And that takes a minute or two for the um, the table to load up here. Now, what's quite interesting is, as well as the existing tables, I also have the option using the query section to be able to use some more fancy features. Um, so, if we take a look at um, in the documentation for the web API endpoint for CRM you can see here how you've got extra things like here um, that gives you the option to select which columns you want to download so by default it downloads everything but here I could specify just the name column I could also choose things like limiting the number of rows I'm going to download and, and a whole bunch of other features that are supported by the web API interface now you can see here I've got to the point where my um, my tables have been downloaded, so I can go and choose which ones I want to I want to play with. So I'm going to have a quick look for um, let's have a look for um, courses. Um, where are we? There we go, so we'll have the list of courses from CRM. So now it's going to go and do a little bit of an inspection of that entity in CRM and give me some data about it so I can help um, you know, create this pipeline. At this point I can choose to apply a filter, so if I want to say give me all the, all the data give me all the data related to a certain point I can choose things like um, you know everything modified within a certain window or something like that but I'm, for this case I'm just going to choose all courses now we need to choose the destination so in this case I'm going to choose the Azure Data Lake store and I'm going to choose my um, one I've got already now there's a couple of choices I've got here I can either 
choose to use service principle authentication where I'd have an Azure Active Directory app set up and I can create um, you know, an ID and a key if I wanted to or I can change it to use auth which I'm going to do in this case just because it's a little bit easier for the demo. Next I need to choose the, um, the folder path so I'm going to choose um, I'm not going to put it into one of the existing folders I'm just going to choose the default so I'll get rid of that. Now what you can also do if you notice here you've got supported variables so you could do things like year, month, day in the path of your folder if you wanted to. Um, you can choose the file name so I'm just going to call it courses and you can have some optional compression here as well so we'll just leave that blank for now. Next we've got to choose the file format so we'll have a just simple text format we're going to make it pipe delimited and we'll um, sorry we'll use add headers to the file and you can also change the um, line feed options as well. Next you need um, fault tolerance so we'll um, we'll skip any rows that aren't successful and just just make it quick and easy. And you can also choose performance options like how many parallel units to use and stuff like that. So again, keeping it simple, we'll just pick auto. So at this point I've got a, a data factory which is going to have a pipeline in it which copies from the OData endpoint from CRM into the data lake store. I need to authorize access to the data lake because I chose my... Um, um, So remember right, I chose the auth option so I've got to just authenticate and then I can now go and um, let it let it set my pipeline up. Now just while it's doing that a couple of little gotchas to watch for so one of the ones was I noticed when I'm trying to copy um, the contacts table for example that had a field with a data type CRA, uh, a data type data factory didn't support so if I remember right it was a binary um, or a byte array was the data format so uh, data factory couldn't send that through so what you might do in that case would be use the advanced options here um, like we were looking at earlier and you might choose which columns you want to have rather than by default letting it do everything I might just list the names of, of the 20 columns I wanted or something like that now pipelines all set up and running and you can see here, um, we just minimise things down a bit. You can see here my uh, my pipeline's starting to copy stuff, and it's going to take a little while to do that. And if we jump back over into my data lake, and we'll just refresh this in, in a minute or so, it should um, should show up with my file. There we go, we can see um, the, the file's appeared now and it's got some data in it, so I can click on that file and choose to have a look inside. And here I can see there's a whole bunch of data which has come from CRM and uh, it lists all the different courses in the university and a whole bunch of data about those courses. So I could then, then from Data Lake choose how I'm going to process that data, so I can do things like Power BI, I can do some analysis queries and there's a whole bunch of options that I can start doing once that data is easily accessible through the data lake. So hopefully that showed you how easy it was with um, the OData endpoint in Data Factory to download data from CRM into another data source to help make it easy to do some analysis. Thanks.